Welcome to our special report tonight, which is about journalism and lies. It's about defamation and this big case that Fox News is on defense over, but it is about so much more than that. It's about some of the people involved, including Tucker Carlson, but it's also about more than Tucker. But to understand all of this, we're going to show you not just some of the new, hot, damning texts, receipts, and evidence that has been in the news, but we're going to go deeper tonight because it matters. And we begin with Mr. Tucker Carlson as our guide. In the absence of any universally recognized standard or source of news, what happens? Well, rumors take the place of news. And so ultimately you have an electorate that is really poorly informed and incredibly suspicious. And in that environment, all sorts of crazy conspiracy theories bloom and take the place of facts. Fact check, true. Now, that was 14 years ago, Mr. Carlson discussing standards, news, conspiracy theories, and the wider implications. And I'm going to show you tonight why some of what he has long said before is actually incriminating for him now, but also why it matters on a broader basis. Mr. Carlson was talking then, long before he was embroiled in what is now a case about lies, what's technically called defamation, a suit against his network, including his comments, material, his evidence is all in there for over a billion dollars. Now, to take one example you may have seen, there were text messages that showed Carlson did not believe the, quote, crazy stuff that the Trump lawyers were pushing and that he and other hosts platformed or potentially endorsed. Indeed, one of the questions at trial is whether they can be convicted of sorts, be held responsible of endorsing it. And there's a gap between what Carlson tells his audience and what he apparently believes, what he privately admits. And he wasn't getting hired to host another TV show, so he created his own media, a political news website called The Daily Caller in 2010. And he argued it would be a conservative answer to popular sites at the time like Huffington Post. And he said it wouldn't be partisan. Quote, our goal is not to get Republicans elected. We are not going to suck up to people in power. That's disgusting, he told the Washington Post. So that's 2010 Tucker. And think about it. What he said then was that he was going to stand for exactly the factual mission that today's Tucker opposes. And the point's not just hypocrisy. The point is that Carlson's own standard informs his potential liability in court for what he's doing now, and it shines a kind of a weird and perhaps troubling light on how this all works, at least for people like him who are willing to tell you things that the Dominion suit suggests are misleading or false, and that you know with your own eyes aren't true when it comes to his January 6th denialism, his trutherism. Now, he took... His mission, though, at that time, remember when he just said he wasn't going to do what he's doing now, he said he wanted more accuracy in conservative media. And accuracy in any type of media is great. He took that argument to the crowd at the famously conservative CPAC conference. So we're going to the archives here. Watch how that CPAC crowd boos then 2010 Mr. Carlson for simply saying something, saying conservatives should have institutions devoted to accuracy. If you create a news organization whose primary objective is not to deliver accurate news, you will fail. You will fail. The New York Times is a liberal paper, but it's also, and it is to its core a liberal paper, it's also a paper that cares about whether they spell people's names right, by and large. It's a paper that actually cares about accuracy. Conservatives need to build institutions that mirror those institutions. That are, that's, that's the truth. You don't believe me? The New York Times? You don't think... Now, Carlson was, briefly, onto something. But the people booing were not only in that literal audience. They were his target audience, which never materialized. As the reports told it, there wasn't an audience. And within a few months, Tucker's website was pushing, quote, fake news, an outrage-driven commentary. So that's a contradiction publicly exposed. And you can't erase the internet. So we have what Tucker Carlson said the site was going to be about and what it turned into. And with that pivot, he found results. The site we checked, quadrupling its page views and total audience in two years, according to the New York Times, which we know is a site that at least then Tucker Carlson thought was valid. 
Now, he may have taken that lesson when he did make it over to Fox, the place that he once said would be hard to imagine working at. Now, Carlson had joined Fox initially as a contributor, which could mean anything, right? Those guests you see who pop in and out. But then he be began co-hosting Fox and Friends Weekend and then got his evening show there in 2016. Now, at the time, Carlson may have looked to some like a kind of journeyman ball player who'd struck out on these other teams. I just showed you more of the history than people sometimes realize, which may inform more of the grievance and pivots that he's executing on. But Carlson had basically tried everything, including pitching what he called accurate news to conservatives and concluding that did not work. So he offered some of the most incendiary and misleading material available at the time on Fox, and that formula brought in viewers. He then overtook Hannity's slot as the highest rated host with the largest audience, not only at Fox at the time, but as TV News would put it, the largest audience in cable news history. Now that's a big deal. Remember, I told you we're gonna try to be objective, so if a big audience is a good thing and he has it, I'm gonna tell you that fact. People can then judge how he's getting it and whether it counts as news. Dominion certainly doesn't think so. So what happened? Carlson built that audience very similarly to how he made that pivot that we showed you at that website, The Daily Caller. Putting views above basically everything, catering to the extreme right, welcoming conspiracy theories on air. He has been criticized by independent experts and anti-hate groups for how he has repeatedly pushed that great replacement theory I mentioned which is something that argues basically that there is a secret cabal of evil Jews and racial minorities who are going to replace the voting public. It is hateful stuff. Now, Fox News and Tucker have built the current following on these kind of supersized lies, and of course with an alliance with Republicans, which is the very thing that Tucker always said initially, previously he opposed. I actually love Donald Trump as a guy. And I, I know Trump. I've known Trump for 20 years because I work in the media, you know. And I just have always gotten along with him. Trump is like totally charming and engaging and fun and interesting. That was three months ago and you can compare it to what he said privately. That he hates Trump passionately, that he can't wait to get past him, that's his own words, and there's a contradiction there. Now Carlson wields influence. He's currently using this perch to mislead his viewers about the January 6th attack, giving cover to those actual trespassers and traitors and convicted seditionists. That's a project that's so extreme, it has now been by, rebuked by everyone from independent fact checkers and people who are there, reporters, the facts, of course, to the police officers that Fox and Mr. Carlson have claimed so often to be behind, to the most powerful Republican in the Senate, Mitch McConnell. But remember what we saw tonight. Mr. Carlson clearly made a decision a long time ago, and this is evidence, this is not opinion, just publicly decided how he would pursue his audience, and it doesn't involve consistency or facts. It just involves figuring out where he thinks he can get that large audience. And along the way, if he is minimizing a sedition, so be it. But this is also much larger than Mr. Carlson. With all this exposed, it's all out here. Fox viewers have been exposed to what happened on January 6th. You can say they might be only relying on Fox or be less informed about certain things, but people saw January 6th. It unfolded live. In fact, we've shown the Fox coverage that day. People know what happened. The larger question is whether and why this movement appears to affirm this as their number one speaker and leader, affirm this kind of lying and attacks on democracy and a leadership that is clearly documented, built on little more than selling you out. And if you're a Fox viewer, it would appear Mr. Carlson is not being honest with you. It would appear he does not think you will catch him or he does not respect you. So if this is what the conservative movement now embraces, it really brings us to a very famous and simple question. Is this your king? Is this your king? Huh? Is this your king? Is this your king? 
question goes beyond the attributes of, in that case, the other warrior. question goes to who you choose to support and what they stand for, and do they represent you? That's a larger question than any particular personality here. We are not, as you'll notice, trying to personally attack or demean anyone. We, on this program, put together this evidence so you could see Mr. Carlson's facts, his life, his career, his work, which is, whether we like it or not, intimately and deeply now tied into how many people understand what's happening in our country and whether or not we will have another insurrection, another coup, whether people really understand we already had an insurrection and attempted coup. Is this your king? And as for Mr. Carlson, who has gone on such a journey, we've showed it to you, you gotta wonder sometimes how does he actually feel if he is a human being here, right? What does he make of all this? And he is literally living out the thing he used to criticize, the right-wing shtick, the lies, the type of media that does not do what he said they needed, which was to have institutions of accuracy. Does he feel like he's lying every day? And if he did feel that way, would he ever just kind of have it seep out in a kind of a projection-filled tirade? Something like this? Imagine forcing yourself to tell lies all day about everything in ways that were so transparent and so outlandish that there is no way the people listening to you could possibly believe anything you said. Then imagine doing that again and again and again every day of your professional life for your entire life. Could you do that? Imagine that.